Dinosaur King is a media franchise created and owned by Sega where dinosaurs transform to and from cards and can be summoned by people to do battle with one another. There's an arcade game, a DS game, a two season anime and trading card game or TCG. Dinosaurs are categorised into one of seven elements, lightning, earth, grass, wind, fire, water or secret. In this series I'll be going through and analysing the scientific accuracy of the species within each element. In this video we're going to be looking at the enigmatic secret element. Since there's only a handful of them I've decided to mix them with the many species featured in the franchise's signature move cards used to enhance the normal dinosaurs. Whilst the main six elements have a consistent theme in terms of the groups they contain, some more so than others admittedly, the secret and move card species are all over the place, with some not even being dinosaurs. Let's start out with the Ornithischian dinosaurs. Up first we have the two genera of Pachycephalosaurs. The models both have the correct number of toes with four, with the first being vestigial and held off the ground. They also have the correct number of fingers with five, however they have claws on all digits when only the innermost three should have them. Their wrists are also pronated, but otherwise they're really good. The first is the titular member Pachycephalosaurus. It is a secret dinosaur and is fittingly the first one to appear in the anime. Its name means thick-headed lizard and it lived in North America at the end of the Cretaceous 70 to 66 million years ago. This reconstruction is almost flawless, aside from the previously mentioned issues. Both the dome and associated spiky ornamentation on the skull looks perfect for an adult P. Wyomingensis. The only other thing is that in the anime it's shown to be much larger than it would have been in life, but this is really a nitpick. That aside, the model is superb. The other Pachycephalosaur is Stegoceras, not to be confused with Stegosaurus. It appears in the arcade and TCG move card Triple Headbutt and the DS game move card Jumping Headbutt. Its name means Horn Roof and it lived in North America during the late Cretaceous roughly 75 million years ago. Because this dinosaur only appears in a few move cards in the arcade and DS game, there aren't many good images of it, but it seems to be perfect aside from the universal issues. The skull dome looks perfectly shaped and the proportions look correct too. Up next we have two ankylosaurs, the first of which we're going to look at is a very complicated genus to talk about, Minmai. It appears in the arcade grass move card Dino Force. Confusingly though, it was made into an Earth Dinosaur card in the TCG, but since it was in a move card first, it felt most appropriate to talk about it here. Whilst named after the Australian town of the same name in 1980, near to where it was discovered, most of the specimens referred to Minmai, including those preserving the skull and articulated armour, were split off into a new genus in 2015, Combarosaurus. As such, this model may be based mainly on material now referred to Combarosaurus. The material still referred to Minmai was found in rock dated to the early Cretaceous, roughly 120 to 112 million years ago, whereas that referred to Combarosaurus is known from younger rocks dated to roughly 105 million years ago. The taxonomic positions of both genera have shuffled massively over the years, which have high bearing on how these animals should be reconstructed. I elaborate on this much more in my video analysing the earth element dinosaurs, but to sum up the situation, as the tail tips of both Combarosaurus and Minmai are unknown, because Combarosaurus is believed to be closely related to the genus Stegoros discovered in 2021, which had a very distinct tail club, it is reasonable to reconstruct Combarosaurus' tail based on this genus. In 2023 however, both Combarosaurus and Minmai were both moved away from Stegoros, so whether either genus should look similar to Stegoros is anyone's guess at this point. For this video, I'm going to assume this model is now meant to represent Combarosaurus and just ignore the tail due to it being incompletely known. 
With all that said, the head looks to be correct, with a flat top, a narrow snout, giving it a wedge shape in dorsal view, and four horns on the back. It also has the characteristic large pointed scutes on the hips, and roughly triangular scutes on the tail. The torso might be too broad though, but it was common at the time to base Minmai on Ankyosaurids, which do have very broad hips. This model shows four fingers, whilst the hand is unknown for both Minmai and Combarosaurus, if we use the much more complete Stegoros to fill in the gaps, it should probably have five. I can't for the life of me find any images of this model's feet, but Minmai and Stegoros have four toes, so let's just say this model does too. All this to say, this animal is very confusing and difficult to reconstruct, but what is there, based on the known material of Combarosaurus, it's pretty good for the time. The other ankylosaur is Porposaurus. This genus is another strange case, as in the arcade, it appears in several move cards, with three different individuals with differing colour schemes, but also as a secret dinosaur. The TCG card is also a secret dinosaur. In the anime and DS game, however, it's a move card called Tag Team. Its name means Pawpaw Lizard, after the Pawpaw Formation in Texas, where it was found in rock data to the early Cretaceous, roughly 105 million years ago. This genus is only known from a single skull, and it looks to have been reconstructed perfectly here. The rest of the body is completely speculative, but it looks very reasonable to me, and so it's basically impossible to judge its accuracy aside from the head. Up next we have Lialinosaura. This genus appears in the arcade in the move card Lialin Cure. In the TCG, however, it appears as a grass dinosaur card. Whilst this element makes sense, considering it is usually identified as an ornithopod, and all other members are in the grass element, it is the only dinosaur card to have a suffix, as its name is Lealinosaura Healer. I don't know why they gave this and only this one dinosaur a suffix, but hey, there you go. Its name means Lealin's Lizard, after its describers, Tom and Patricia Rich's daughter, Lealin. It was discovered in Australia, in rock data to the early Cretaceous, roughly 118 million years ago. Its classification has shifted to various places on the Ornithischian family tree, but it most often lands within ornithopods. Whilst more derived ornithopods only had three toes, the small and fully bipedal Lealinosaura had four, but the first toe was vestigial and didn't touch the ground. It has been speculated that since Victoria, Australia was within the Antarctic Circle during the Cretaceous, it may have had feathers for insulation during the polar winter, but no evidence for feathers is known, so I won't critique the model for only having scales. One skull had very large orbits, interpreted as housing large eyes to see in the low light polar nights. However, later in 2010, this was reinterpreted as being proportionally large eyes of a juvenile specimen, but not all researchers agree. As such, it's possible the eyes may be too large on this model if this is representing an adult, but it's hard to say until we have more clarity. Whilst often depicted with an extremely long tail, in 2013, the long-tailed specimen couldn't be confidently referred to Lealinosaura. The tail on this model looks quite reasonable, I'd say. It's hard to judge the accuracy of this model due to the lack of clarity from the fossil material, but I would say it looks great for the time. We now reach the theropods. In Dinosaur King, all the theropods have a fair few universal issues that are very common errors. The first are that many are shrink-wrapped, with the fenestrae, the holes in the skull, being present through the skin when they should be obscured by skin and tissue. Theropods are also thought by most researchers to have had lips. However, here most of them have exposed teeth. They all have pronated wrists, when their palms would have been facing each other rather than the ground. They're restored with the correct number of toes with four. However, their middle toes are shown as being the same length as the other two weight-bearing toes, but it should be longer as it bore the most weight. The final note is that many of their tails are too skinny. 
Theropods had large caudofemoral muscles, the muscles that were anchored to the tail that would pull the legs back and so they should be much thicker at the bases. The first theropod we'll be looking at is Cryolophosaurus. Similar to Porposaurus, it first appeared in several arcade and DS game move cards with a slightly different coloration before later being made into a secret dinosaur, which it also appears as in the anime and TCG. Its name means Frozen Crested Lizard, as it was actually the first dinosaur named from Antarctica, in rock data till the early Jurassic, roughly 185 million years ago. Its skull is incompletely known, but its signature crest is present on this model. However, the gap between the two pompadours, as they've been called, looks to be much too wide. The skull should also slope more towards the end of the snout than is shown here. It has also been given three fingers, and whilst its hands are unknown, compared with the animals it's thought to be most closely related to, such as Dilophosaurus, it most likely had four, albeit with the fourth being small and vestigial. This model isn't the best Crylophosaurus, but you could do worse, I suppose. Next we have the first dinosaur to ever be named Megalosaurus, and it is a secret dinosaur in all of its appearances. As to be expected of the first dinosaur name, its definition is incredibly generic, meaning Big Lizard, and it lived in England during the Middle Jurassic roughly 168 million years ago. Megalosaurid heads are now known to be slightly longer and more rectangular in profile compared to the more triangular shape seen here. It does have the correct number of fingers with three. The torso should probably be a bit longer and the legs should probably be a bit shorter. This model is based on earlier size estimates of around 10 meters, whereas more recent studies have significantly downsized it to about six meters. The model is extremely cool, but it's a bit dated now. We now reach the most derived group of theropods, the Silurosaurs. They are more closely related to birds than other theropods, and are known to have had feathers at least at some point in their life cycle, whether it only be down when they're young or maintaining full plumage as adults. What's strange is that many of the models lack feathers entirely, or only have very sparse coverings, but some do have full feather coats. By modern standards, they should all have full, penacious feathers everywhere but the lower legs, with some exceptions which I'll mention when we get to them. Their forelimbs are even thought to have had wings, though not always for flight. Up first we have the family Ornithomimidae, meaning bird mimics. It's an appropriate name as they were very similar to modern flightless birds, especially ostriches, as they had long legs, thought to have made them strong runners. They also lacked teeth and instead had duck-like beaks and were thought to have been omnivorous. The first we're going to look at is Gallimimus. It appears in the arcade move card Galley Rush but was made into a wind dinosaur card in the TCG, which, if they were going to give it an element, wind does seem perfect. Its name means Chicken Mimic, and it lived in Asia during the late Cretaceous, roughly 70 million years ago. Anatomically, it looks to be perfect. It's been given an odd head crest that I can't tell if it's feathers or scaly skin. Aside from the missing feathers, it's an excellent reconstruction. Next is Struthiomimus. It only appears in the arcade move card Struthio Rush. It lived in North America during the late Cretaceous from 77 to 66 million years ago. The ostrich comparison is apt as its name literally means ostrich mimic. Like the Gallimimus, the model is anatomically perfect, but it's also been given a weird little head crest. Nothing more to say on this one. The third and final Ornithomimid is not the group's namesake Ornithomimus, funnily enough, but Dromesiomimus. It only appears in the arcade move card Dromesio Rush. Its name means Emu Mimic, and it lived in North America during the late Cretaceous, roughly 73 to 68 million years ago. Once again, anatomically perfect with a weird head crest. Nothing more to add. 
Though it is a bit odd that Gallimimus was made into a wind dinosaur card in the TCG, but the other two ornithomimids weren't. Up next we have two Therizinosaurs. This is a group of theropods that were actually herbivores, unusual for a lineage of mainly carnivores. They had long necks with small heads and were the only theropods whose hips tilted downwards towards the tail, giving them a very sloping back, ending with short, stumpy tails. Their signature trait was of course their enormous claws, which are present in the Dinosaur King models. Something I was very pleasantly surprised to see is that they have the correct feet. Like all non-avian theropods, therizinosaurs had four toes. However, whilst almost all other theropods held their first toes off the ground, the derived members of the family Therizinosauridae used them for walking. I applaud the designers for including this detail, as it would have been very easy to just skip over it and give them more generic theropod feet. The first of the two genera is the group's namesake, Therizinosaurus, and it is a secret dinosaur in all incarnations. The name Therizinosaurus means scythe lizard, after its enormous claws, the largest in the animal kingdom in fact. It lived in Asia during the late Cretaceous, roughly 70 million years ago. Here it is shown covered in feathers, which is really cool, however it has been debated whether such huge animals would have been at risk from overheating with full feather coats. Seeing as this is still debated though, I won't criticise this model for it. It is genuinely wonderful. The other Therizinosaur genus is Segnosaurus. It appears in several move cards in the arcade, DS game and TCG. Its name means Slow Lizard, and it lived in Asia during the late Cretaceous, roughly 90 million years ago. The only issue I can make out is that its lower jaw looks too straight when its mandible has a strong downwards curving tip. It looks to have the correctly sized claws, as they were smaller than those of Therizinosaurus. It too has been given a coat of feathers, and as I said with the Therizinosaurus, I won't critique it. On the whole, other than the jaw, it's a great model. Next, we have Oviraptor. It appears in several egg-related grass move cards in the arcade, DS game and TCG. It lived in Asia during the late Cretaceous, 75 million years ago. Its name means Egg Caesar, after the misconception that it stole the eggs of Protoceratops. Based on the tall crest, this model most likely represents the genus Citipatti, a closely related oviraptorid that was long considered to be oviraptor before being made distinct in 2001. It does actually have feathers, However, they're missing from the hands, even though feathers develop at the hands first and then grow up the arms. The tail should also form a broad fan or frond. The fact they included feathers at all is really cool though, and anatomically, it's a really good city patty for the time. Next up we have the Dromaeosaurids, the very bird-like family of theropods commonly called raptors, which had sickle claws on the second toe. The first of this group we're going to look at is Deinonychus. It is a secret dinosaur in all incarnations, featuring as a trio in the anime. Its name means Terrible Claw, and it lived in North America during the early Cretaceous, roughly 110 million years ago. The head looks to be a bit too rectangular in profile, when the snout should be slightly more pointed. They've been given two bony crests in front of the eyes, which are present on the skull, but probably wouldn't be this pronounced in life. It's hard to tell, but I think they do have a coat of very short, filamentous feathers, colloquially known as dino fuzz, whereas by modern standards, they should have a coat of full, panaceous feathers. One of them also has a very interesting headdress of feathers. I don't know how plausible that is, but it looks cool. Anatomically though, the body proportions all look to be correct, and the signature sickle claw is present on the second toe of the foot. It's not the best Deinonychus model, but you could also do much worse. The next Dromaeosaurid is the most famous, Velociraptor. Its incarnations in the franchise are very interesting. 
In the anime, it is the only normal dinosaur card, and after being altered, becomes the only triangular card and has multiple moves within it. In the arcade and DS game, it features in normal moves, and in the TCG, it is a wind dinosaur card. It fits in the wind element, but yeah, quite varied appearances. Its name means Swift Caesar, and it lived in Asia during the late Cretaceous from 75 to 71 million years ago. The head looks perfect and actually has lips. The body proportions also look perfect and the signature dromaeosaur sickle claw is present. Like the Deinonychus, it also has a full coat of filamentous feathers when they should have full pinaceous feathers. Whilst it should have more feathers by modern standards, this model is fantastic otherwise. The last Dromaeosaurid is perhaps the most obscure dinosaur in the franchise, Microraptor. It only appears in an unreleased move card in the arcade, whose name is unknown and very briefly in the anime. However, it may be what the Pterosaur character in the second season actually represents. Its name means Small Caesar, and it lived in China during the early Cretaceous, roughly 120 million years ago. It was famous for having four wings, which from the very few images we have of this creature seem to be present, as well as its long tail feathers. It is shown to have white feathers, however later in 2012, an amazingly preserved specimen showed that its feathers were iridescent black. Whilst this model is now outdated, for the time it is fantastic. Next up we have Troodon. It appears in normal move cards in the arcade, DS game and TCG, but in the latter it was also printed as a wind dinosaur card. As a small theropod, it fits perfectly in the wind element. Its name means Wounding Tooth, and it was one of the first dinosaurs ever found in North America, in rock dated from roughly 75 to 66 million years ago. Troodon is a problematic genus, as the name was assigned only to teeth, which by modern standards are non-diagnostic for a genus name. As such, much of this reconstruction is likely based on fossil material now referred to the genera Stenonychosaurus, Pectinodon, and or Latina venatrix. It has a coat of feathers, though they should be pinaceous feathers rather than just filamentous. The skull looks to be the correct shape, with appropriately large eyes, and the bodily proportions look to be right too, including the small sickle claw compared to dromaeosaurids. On the whole, this model is really good, though it's difficult to discern what North American troodontid genus it actually represents now. The last theropod we'll be looking at is Archaeopteryx. It only appears in the arcade move card, Archaeopteryx Charm. It lived in Europe during the late Jurassic, roughly 150 million years ago. Its name means Ancient Wing, and it is often cited as the first bird. Whilst this claim is difficult to be certain of due to the varying definitions of what is and isn't a bird, it is certainly a very bird-like theropod. The head looks to be the correct shape, as it's quite pointed and triangular in profile. It's also been given a small feather head crest. There's no evidence for this, but it seems plausible. The neck appears too skinny, as it should be about as thick as the back of the head. It has been given the appropriate feather coverage, except for the legs, which seem too bare when they are thought to have had much more plumage on the thighs. In 2011, similar to Microraptor, it was found to have had black plumage, so whilst this model is now a bit outdated, it's pretty good on the whole. In terms of dinosaurs, the last major lineage we have to cover are the sauropodomorphs. Despite all other members of this group being in the water element, there are four outside of it, though put a pin in that, as there are some important variables that I'll get into. The first is a very interesting one, Eoraptor. Its name means Dawn Caesar, and it lived in Argentina during the late Triassic, roughly 230 million years ago. It appears in the arcade and DS game as a secret dinosaur with a very unique ability. It can evolve into other dinosaurs, Pokemon style. 
This is presumably a reference to how it was such an early member of the Dinosauria, and therefore may have been close to the ancestry of all later forms. A cool idea for sure, though not that reflective of dinosaur evolution, especially now. It was long thought to be a very early, if not the oldest known, dinosaur, and was typically restored as a theropod. More recent studies, however, suggest it was actually an extremely basal sauropodomorph before the group specialised towards herbivory. As such, this model is reconstructed like an early theropod and has four fingers, when sauropodomorphs have five. It's hard to tell if it has four toes or five, but the latter would be correct by modern standards. The head is not quite the right shape, as the top of the snout seems to slope too much, when the skull appears to be much straighter. This model is unfortunately a bit dated, but it's honestly still pretty good. The other three genera are all definite sauropods, and all are within the family Diplodocidae, funnily enough, living during the late Jurassic. The nostrils are placed on top of the head, which, whilst correct at the time, they should now be at the snout tip, like other dinosaurs. They all have the correct number of fingers and toes, with five on each limb. The hands are round, but they should be crescent-shaped, and the feet should also be longer. The first we're going to look at is Seismosaurus. It appears in all incarnations in the Grass Move card, Big Foot Assault, as well as a few others in the TCG and as a Water Dinosaur card. Like most sauropods in the franchise, the name Seismosaurus means seismic lizard, but it has since been reclassified as a species of Diplodocus, D. holorum. Diplodocus means double beam, after the weirdly shaped chevron bones in the underside of the tail. It lived in North America roughly 150 million years ago. Regardless of its classification, this model is wonderful. It has the Diplodocid family's signature, extremely long, whip-like tail, even by sauropod standards. The shape of the head and the bodily proportions are all essentially perfect for the time. The only issue is that it has claws on all of its digits, when sauropods only had claws on the first finger and innermost three toes. Otherwise though, it is an excellent portrayal of Diplodocus holorum. The next genus, Supersaurus, is very similar, as it appears in a grass move card, Super Impact, in the arcade, DS game and anime. But not in the TCG for some reason, where it appears in several other grass move cards. Its name means Super Lizard, and it lived roughly 150 million years ago in North America, and possibly also Europe, depending on whether the Portuguese genus, Dinerosaurus, is synonymous with it. This model too looks to be perfect for the time. Unlike the Seismosaurus, it has the correct claw arrangement and has a row of conical spines down its back. These appear frequently in the Plodokid reconstructions and are known from these animal in the form of skin impressions, just not definitively from Diplodocus or Supersaurus specifically. I think it's more than reasonable to assume these genera had these spines though, unless evidence is found to the contrary. Overall, it is magnificent, or should I say, super. The last sauropod is a very interesting one, as I'm not sure what genus to refer to it as. Brontikens, in the anime, is the last secret dinosaur in the franchise, and, as you can guess from his name, refers to Brontosaurus, meaning Thunder Lizard. At the time Dinosaur King was made, Brontosaurus was considered an invalid genus, synonymous with Apatosaurus, meaning Deceptive Lizard. As such, it is referred to as Apatosaurus throughout the franchise. In 2015, however, the name Brontosaurus was resurrected and species referred to Apatosaurus, such as A. excelsis and A. parvus, were reassigned to Brontosaurus. This makes it difficult to determine whether this model was based on the species now referred to Brontosaurus, or it is the now only species of Apatosaurus A. louise. Regardless of Brontikens' identity, it also lived in North America roughly 150 million years ago. It differed from the two Diplodocines in that it was much more heavily built. This is represented well in this model. 
The head looks to be ever so slightly too long from what I can tell. Its neck and especially its tail though are too short. It's built more like a Dicraeosaur than a Diplodocid. It does at least have the right arrangement of claws. Whichever genus Brontikens is now, it's not the best representation of either, sadly. But it could also be much worse, I suppose. We now reach the non-dinosaur species. Up first, we have the flying pterosaurs. Across all of Dinosaur King's various incarnations, they always appear in move cards. Generally, they have the correct number of fingers and toes, with three quote-unquote normal fingers, and the elongated fourth finger forming the attachment point for the wing membrane. Their non-wing fingers point downwards, whereas more modern reconstructions have their palms facing forwards, with the fingertips curling towards the body. Strangely, the first toe is shown to be smaller than the other three, when they should all be the same size. They appear to just have scaly skin, but they should now have pycnofibers, small, hair-like filaments all over the body. The trailing edge of the main wing membrane, the chiropotagium, or brachiopotagium, is shown to connect to the hips, but in more modern reconstructions, it connects to the ankles, forming a much larger flight surface. In front of the arms, a second membrane, the propotagium, formed the leading edge of the wing and connected the shoulders to the wrists. I was impressed when I saw that the Dinosaur King models are correctly reconstructed with this feature. The only pterosaurs in Dinosaur King are all derived pterodactyloids from the Cretaceous, which have short tails. In these animals, the third flight membrane, the Europotagium, connects the insides of the legs from the ankles to the pelvis, also enlarging the total flight surface. However, this was not known at the time and is still debated now, so I won't critique the Dinosaur King models for lacking this feature. The first pterosaur is the most famous, Pteranodon. Its name means wing without teeth, and it lived in North America roughly 85 million years ago. The bills on the models are straight when it should gently curve upwards. There are several species, defined by their various head crests, some of which may represent different genera. Interestingly, the trio seen in the move card Metal Wing show two types of head crests. One of the trio has the more typical shape of P. longiceps. However, the other two have the crest of P. sternbergii, which may be a separate genus, Geosternbergia. They also all appear to be males, as females are thought to have had much smaller crests, though it's debated whether the two morphs of crests seen in P. longiceps represent sexual dimorphism, or if they are just individual variation, or even distinct species. Overall, they're pretty good, and I think it's really cool to have the multiple species representation. Speaking of, next up is the pterosaur referred to as Tapijara. Its name means Lord of the Ways, and it lived in Brazil roughly 110 million years ago. What's very strange is that there are actually two separate models that differ in the head crest. The model seen in the arcade move card Tapijara Dive represents Tapijara Welnhoferi. Its crest resembles the fossil skull. However, it is speculated that the protrusions at the front and back of the skull were attachment points for soft tissues in life, creating a much larger and rounder crest than is portrayed in this model. The second model, seen in the arcade move cards Tiebreaker and Quick Strike, represent specimens now referred to the genus Tupandactylus, also from Brazil around the same time, and its name means Tupan Finger, after the thunder god of the same name in the Brazilian Tupi people's culture. As far as I can tell, this model is practically perfect as it has an accurate soft tissue crest. So it's odd that the actual Tapijara model only had the bony crest reconstructed. Next we have Tupawara, which appears in the move card Tupawara Dive. It was a contemporary of Tapijara, and was also named after a Tupi mythological figure. There are several species, but this model appears to be based on T. leonardii, based on its rounder crest. 
I have next to nothing to say about this model, as it is essentially perfect, as its distinct crest is reconstructed wonderfully. The same can be said for Anyanguera, which appears in the move card Anyanguera Dive. Its name means Bygone Spirit Protector of the Animals, which is one of the coolest name definitions maybe ever. This model is most likely based on the Brazilian species A. Blittersdorfii, which would make it yet another contemporary of Tapijara. Its nasal and chin crests and huge interlocking needle-like teeth are perfectly reconstructed, another superb pterosaur model. The last pterosaur is Quetzalcoatlus, which appears in the move cards Skydive and Sky Strike. It lived in North America from 70 to 66 million years ago. It is named after the Aztec god Quetzalcoatl, and this model is also perfect. The utterly bizarre proportions and the giant stork-like head and crest are superb as far as I can tell. The last group we have are the marine reptiles. There are only three in the entire franchise and they span two very different lineages that are not closely related. The first group are the plesiosaurs. These were four flippered reptiles and the two species featured in Dinosaur King are typical long-necked forms, but the group is very diverse in terms of neck length. They are almost perfect for the time. Outside of one detail, they are shown to hold their necks in the outdated swan-like pose, which was deemed physically impossible for plesiosaurs with long necks. They are also now outdated due to the fact we now know plesiosaurs had tail flukes. The first plesiosaur is Moranosaurus. It only features in the arcade grass move card Dino Force. Its name means eel lizard and it lived in Europe during the Middle Jurassic, roughly 165 million years ago. It looks practically perfect compared to the known fossil material, with the exception of the neck probably being ever so slightly too long. Overall though, this model is great. The other plesiosaur is Futabasaurus. It appears in a single water move card with different names in the arcade, DS game, anime and TCG, the last of which it also appears as a water dinosaur card, despite it not even being a dinosaur, making it the only one of its kind in the franchise. It is named after the Futaba geological group where it was discovered in Japan in rock dated to the late Cretaceous, roughly 85 million years ago. Aside from the universal issues, this model looks perfect compared with the fossil material. This might be the most popular, if not the only, portrayal of this animal in paleo media, in which case I'm very happy that Futaba is a wonderful representation of its genus. The last marine reptile is Ophthalmosaurus. It only appears in a single water move card in the arcade, TCG and anime Ocean Panic. Its name means Eye Lizard, after its enormous eyes, the largest proportionally of any vertebrate in fact. It lived during the middle to late Jurassic, from 165 to 157 million years ago, and may have had a global distribution. It was an ichthyosaur, a group of reptiles that convergently evolved a very similar body plan to dolphins. The fact the move card summons several of them may be a reference to how dolphins live in pods, but whether this was the case with ichthyosaurs is unknown. The model looks near perfect, however it's worth noting that it is shown to have teeth, which are only known from sub-adult specimens, with adults losing their teeth entirely. It's possible these are meant to represent a pod of sub-adults, which would be cool, so overall, the model looks excellent. Dinosaur King's secret element and move card species are next to impossible to sum up as a whole in terms of accuracy, as it's such a diverse mix of species. It does make for an interesting discussion in the fandom as to which of the six normal elements they would be in if they weren't secrets or move cards though. 
I'd like to thank my good friend The Cobra Effect and recommend you check out my friend and fellow paleo YouTuber The Casual Prince 8 and his videos on Dinosaur King if you're a fan. I also recommend you check out and support the dev team of the Dinosaur King fan game Dinosaur Kingdom. They're doing awesome work and I'm excited to see the project progress through development. Thank you guys so much for watching and please do check out my other videos and subscribe as it helps a ton. Bye bye now.